Great. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Um, I'm Joe Lattimore. I am the uh, director of the Michigan Clean Water Corps based at Michigan State University. And I want to welcome all of you to the MyCorps conference this morning. Um, one little housekeeping item regarding Zoom. If you don't like the way that uh, things are appearing on your screen, um, you should find in the upper right hand corner of your screen a button called view. And if you click that, there's different options if you want to zoom in on the speaker or if you want to see everybody in a gallery. So you kind of look like um, uh, one of those game shows. I'm drawing a blank on what it is, but <laughs> with all the little squares with everybody on it, that's how I like to look at it right now. I love seeing everybody. Um, and it's it's just really nice to see you all here. Of course, we absolutely were hoping to be with you all at the Ram Center this morning and last night, um, but out of an abundance of caution, we made the, as you know, kind of last minute call to make it an online event um, and in hopes that we'll get to see you in person sometime very soon. So the first thing that I want to do is do introductions of our MyCore team, and um, they were warned that I was going to ask them to do this. And so um, I'll introduce myself first, and then I'll call on each of our team members to, um, you know, turn on their mics and cameras and introduce themselves to you. Um, so you can sometimes it's nice to be able to put face to the name um, for one of these uh, events, even though we're not in person, we're going to make try and make it feel as social as we can here on Zoom today. So as I mentioned at the top of, of uh, the hour, my name is Joe Lattimore. I am uh, based at Michigan State University. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife there. And uh, though I have an office on campus in East Lansing and I have students that I work with there, um, I work primarily from home in Traverse City. And so um, I spend a lot of time moving around the state, um, working with different programs and volunteers um, for this program. And, and I also do a lot of work on aquatic invasive species, prevention and monitoring, working with partners like Eagle and DNR and a lot of our watershed groups and conservation districts on those issues. So um, that's something that I really enjoy doing. As far as my role in MyCore, I have been um, involved with MyCore since we gave it the name MyCore, I think about 17 years ago. It even predates my time at MSU. I, I previously worked at the Huron River Watershed Council and got involved when MyCore was just getting started there. And um, I've kind of moved around in different roles. I started out with a focus on our stream monitoring program. And when I came to MSU, I moved over and started doing more work on the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program. And then um, with our new contract um, with Eagle for my core, bringing it over to MSU, I assumed the role of director at that point. So um, I've been, you know, honored with the opportunity to work with a lot of, of folks through the years that are doing volunteer monitoring and leading monitoring programs and stream cleanups and, and all those things. So it's, it's really a, a highlight of my job is to be able to do that. And so um, I'm really excited to have us uh, here together. Although it's on Zoom, we're here together. And I'm going to make the most of today. So um, thank you all for being here. And at this time, I would like to uh, ask Tamara Lipsy from Eagle to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I am Tamara Lipsy. I, as Joe said, work with Eagle. Um, I'm a aquatic biologist, or you can say a watershed biologist, and I have been so for about almost 20 years in April, which makes me feel a bit old. <laughs> um, I am in the Lake Michigan unit, so the watersheds that I primarily sample or I'm the lead for include the Pawpaw River Watershed, the Looking Glass River Watershed, the Platte and the Betsy, which I'll be sampling next summer, and the Manistee River Watershed. And then a couple of years ago, uh, Marcy Wilmus um, received a promotion here at Eagle. And so my supervisor, um, Gary Kolhup, asked if I would be interested in taking on the MyCore program. And I enthusiastically said yes, because I had wanted to for quite some time. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. I enjoy interacting with people and learning your stories about your lakes. Um, and that's a really good fit for me. So I am sad not to finally meet some of you in person, but um, it is good to see your faces and I'm happy to be here all safe and sound. Thanks, Tamara. Um, we appreciate you being here too. Um, Eric, would you like to go next? Thank you, Joe. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Elgin. I'm an aquatic ecologist with Michigan State University Extension, and uh, I'm I have a office, much like Joe. It's I'm I'm statewide and and work all over the place um, with various activities. But my office is in Fremont, uh, Michigan, in Nuego County, so just north of Grand Rapids, an hour or so, forty five minutes. Um, my my job entails, uh, it, it's a great job. I get to work on the conservation and monitoring of our our lakes around the state. You know, when working on lakes, I, I you know, you focus on them, but it's also watersheds, streams, wetlands, groundwater. It's it's everything that is attached to them. And so it's it's a great job that it brings me all over the place. Um, also, along with the with my core, I also do a lot of things with shorelines, uh, with the restoration and protection of our shorelines on our lakes, uh, as well as aquatic plants. And I do a lot of invasive species stuff, but also the, the native species, because who doesn't like to go swimming in an underwater forest, right? So our, our native species are also really cool. Um, my role for my core, I am the lakes manager. So many of you get a lot of emails from me through time, uh, all of our volunteers um, to give updates and make sure we're on track and to answer any questions. I help uh, lead the program and do a lot of background stuff and then work with all of you as well. Um, it's one of the big benefits of this position is that I and I've been on with some of you are side by sides is what we call them. So I go all around the state during the summer and I get to uh, jump on a boat with many of you and and um, uh, help out and learn about your lake and 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 help, you know, collect good data, good quality data. And um, one of the other side benefits to me is so I'm originally from Minnesota and I've been in this role for six or seven years or something like that. And um what a great way to learn Michigan's lakes and landscapes uh, by cruising around with all of you uh, uh, and, and seeing all of your places. So welcome. Uh, I look forward to, the, to spending the day with you. Thanks, Eric, for that introduction. Um, Paul, you wanna go next? Space bar is not working for me. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Paul Steen. I work for the Huron River Watershed Council. And uh, actually, when Joe left here, I got her job. So uh, it was a nice trans. Then I got to keep working with her. So I, it was a great transition for me. Uh, but I've been doing this for, for 15 years. Um, and my part in my core is to help everyone do stream monitoring. So I am I'm training and I am managing grants and I am visiting groups and uh, a lot of emailing, a lot of emailing with all the managers who, who do the, the, um, all, all, the, all the volunteer coordination that has to happen to make the stream program work. Uh, I love insects. I love our crustaceans and our rivers. Um, I like uh, studying them alive and under a microscope. Um, and I wish I was there in person with you. Our plan was to pull pull insects out of the south branch of the Asabo and see what we had um, in that river. Uh, instead, we'll, we're changing focus this afternoon. We'll do something else, um, but wish I was with you. Uh, I keep this map of Michigan behind me to remind myself that the Huron River, which is in southeast Michigan, is one tiny part. That's where I spend most of my focus. But I like to remember Michigan is huge and there are thousands of miles of streams in it. And um, yeah, so and I like, and I like all parts of, of, of it. I also just wanna recognize Jason Frenzel and Kate Laramie who are, who are on screen and they work with me at the Watershed Council and they help me with my core too. So I don't want, and, and our own stream monitoring here. So I wanted to recognize them. Thanks, Paul, and, and hi, Jason and, and Kate. We're glad that you're able to join us today, too. Um, Jean, would you like to introduce yourself? Once I unmute myself, I'll be happy to. So my name is Jean Roth, and my husband, Jim, and I have been 
uh, CLMP monitors for our little lake here in Iasco County. And if my math is correct, it'll be 25 years as monitors. And I got involved with MLSA and the program because I did volunteer work for MLSA at their northern office in Long Lake for many years. And I have been administrating my part of the micro program since 2009. I make sure you all get your supplies you need for the perimeters you sign up for. And my husband, Jim, makes the, uh, we call them composite samplers because the basic element that everything is in is a pork and bean can and composite sampler sounds a lot more impressive. But <laughs> he also assembles the sucky disc uh, to the measuring tape. And I also enter data at the end of the year for those of you who do not enter their data. I can help you with most of your needs or I can direct you to someone who can. I'm glad we're all here and um, we'll just continue from there and like everybody be safe. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Jean. And I think it's interesting. I'm glad, Paul, that you mentioned the, the Michigan map and how big Michigan is. You know, you're probably all hearing that your team, your my core support team, we're scattered all over Michigan too. We're all over the place, um, and uh, you know, so that gives us a sense of of you know how big Michigan is, and we travel a lot, and it gives us a chance to to see a lot of Michigan and see a lot of your lakes and streams. We always appreciate those opportunities. All right, we've got a couple more people to get through. Uh, Melissa, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I am in from the cold. It was actually actively snowing on me while I was dropping my son off at school this morning. Um, so that's what I was what I was doing if anybody saw my screen. So good morning. I'm Melissa DeSimone. I am the executive director of Michigan Lakes and Streams Association. We are all in and dedicated to this program. Um, it's really very important to us. Um, if you interact with MLSA, um, you will be interacting with people from all over. Our board is all over the state. Um, our mailing address is in Kalamazoo. Uh, my, my admin is in White Pigeon, um, so often she will travel up to Kalamazoo in the snowy weather and grab the mail there. Um, I am actually currently sitting um, just outside of Chicago, and so I have to go ahead and shout out to everybody how much I appreciate Eric Elgin calling me yesterday morning um, right before I was going to start my six hour drive up to the Ram Center. So thank you, Eric, <laughs> for saving me the Chicago traffic and in addition, the um, snowy Michigan uh, weather. But I, I am, I am, uh, you know, I am disappointed that we are not together um, because it would have been nice to be among you all again. It's been a couple of years for me um, to be in person. Obviously, my, my first MyCore conference, well, actually, I went to two MyCore conferences that were in person and then they've been virtual after that. So, um, but I'm really glad that you're all here. I'm really glad that we were able to include more people today. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's two sides to everything. Um, so super happy you're all here. MLSA is, is here to support everything that you're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I am too personally. So we, uh, we just appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks, Melissa. And I, I don't think your colleague Mike Gallagher is on this morning, but uh, I was looking for him too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll also mention that Mike is a is a longtime volunteer from Gull Lake. He also serves as treasurer for MLSA and has been a longtime incredible supporter of the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program in my core overall. And he participates in our monthly team meetings and gives us really great perspectives and in some ways grounds us um, as a as a volunteer on the ground. He can tell us, you know, what the volunteer perspective. So um, I, I I think Mike plans to join us a little bit later today. Um, and so finally, Dylan, I, I think you're on today. Would you like to introduce yourself as a, as a member of the team that people don't always get to get to see or meet? Yeah, I am the, I'm Dylan Hoffner. I'm uh, the lead developer over at RS and GIS. We are a pretty small group out of the Department of Geography at MSU. And I became the lead developer about a year ago. And that's kind of when I started to work with the MyCore team and uh, start development on the website. And yeah, I, I've been working on the website for a while. It's been very fun and inquisitive to work on it. 
And I hope to bring you guys a better website experience. So if there are any questions, concerns specifically about the website, um, <clears throat> I, I can answer those questions and hopefully uh, use that information in the future to develop a website for you guys uh, that is much easier to work with. So yeah. Thanks so much, Dylan. Um, we're thrilled to have Dylan on our team now. He's helping um, with, yeah, as you mentioned, our website, our database. You know, he's he's one of the newer members of our team, so he inherited a really big and complicated um, website and database, and um, he's he's doing amazing work. And I'm going to highlight some of the updates that we've had um, here in a minute when I go through some MyCore updates. And and I also kind of think you should win coolest lighting uh, background <laughs> award <laughs> for oh, today. Yeah. So, uh, we appreciate you have being here today with us, Dylan. No problem. Thank you for having me. Sure. All right. Well, at this point, we've gotten through our team introductions, and um, I want to spend a little time doing some, um, giving you guys some updates on what's going on in the uh, in the MyCore world. So I'm going to share my screen. I have a little uh, PowerPoint for you here. Switch over, click that, click that. Can the team confirm things look okay? Looks good. All right. Thanks, Eric. Um, so yeah, we started doing this uh, feature of the um, conference uh, last year, kind of our what's up and what's new section. And um, we want to spend a few minutes this morning uh, with some updates about the program. Um, and I'm also going to spend a little time highlighting some resources that we have for you uh, in the program that you may or may not be aware of. I know that um, from looking through the registration for today's conference, a whole lot of you, this is your first MyCore conference. Um, you may have not um, you know, heard some of these updates before. And I think it's always good for us to spend a little time with these updates and sharing some of the um, resources and features that we have for your use. Um, because as as I mentioned when Dylan was talking, we have um, a big website with a whole lot of content on it. So we want to highlight some of the features that we have there for you. So, you know, here's here's our current website. As Dylan hinted at, we're working on rolling out a fresh new one. Um, that's that's you know a ways off yet. There's a lot of work to be done in the background before we reveal it all to you, but um, a lot of these same resources will be there um, for you. So I wanted to spend a little time talking about them. So first of all, you know, we have resources obviously for our data and you can find all of that in the data exchange section of our website at mycore.net. And um, that's where you can go in and look and view data. And it's also where you will enter data if that's one of your responsibilities in your program. And so um, the um, data viewing opportunity here, if you clicked on view data, you do have the opportunity to choose to look at stream or lake data, and then you can search by a number of parameters um, and dates. Uh, I have it highlighting lakes here, so you can see the lake parameters and so forth on there. And this is all publicly available information. It's You can search and look for any MyCore data going back to the mid 70s for our lakes, from the mid 90s for streams, and um, it's available and accessible to anyone who's interested. Um, you can look at it right there on your computer screen. You can also download it into a spreadsheet if you want to play with it on your own computer and manipulate it and, and uh, you know, do math, create graphs, whatever you want to do. Um, that data is there for anyone who's interested. And um, speaking of that, you might be interested to know that it's certainly not just our MyCore volunteers or MyCore program leaders that are looking at these data. Um, Tamara could tell you that Eagle and also the DNR use this data quite a bit for planning purposes, for assessment, for finding um, issues that might be occurring in our lakes and streams. Um, we get a lot of searches from scientists around Michigan and beyond that are interested in looking at broad scale data about our lakes and streams. Um, it's used in classrooms for teaching with real data sets. Um, we have realtors looking for uh, a, a healthy stream or lake for their clients to buy property on. Um, the data gets a whole lot of use. And so we're proud to be able to host it and make it available to people. Um, it's, it's really valuable. 
for the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program, another way to view data is to look for our individual lake reports that um, Paul uh, puts together every year um, based on um, the CLMP data that's current. So you can also find these on our website under the lakes tab on the website. These are our individual lake reports and there's one for every lake that's recently been in the program. So even if they weren't in the program in 2021, if they were in the program in 2019, and that was the last time, then the 2019 report will appear on there. And that has a whole treasure trove of information in hard copy that you can download to your computer or print out. Um, this makes a really nice handout um, for lake associations and watershed groups as well, if you wanna share a summary of the uh, most recent data for your lake. So another really useful resource that we have on our, on our website. Um, this is kind of new and exciting stream data entry. I know some of you have been patiently waiting for us to make some really uh, helpful upgrades to our stream data entry. Um, capabilities and Dylan and Paul in particular have been working really hard on this. And so um, it's it's up and running again, which we're really excited. And if you attend um, Paul and Tamara's session this afternoon, I think you're going to hear even more about the um, stream managing program. Yep, Paul's got his thumbs up there. So data entry is going to be covered in that session. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. We also have... Um, some really nice training materials. Um, one, as I mentioned before, one of the benefits of us going online over the last couple of years for a lot of our programs is it made it really easy for us to record our presentations, our PowerPoints, our lectures that we give um, for training on the different monitoring programs, both for lakes and streams. So there's the most recent recordings of all those trainings are on our website. And we also have some short videos, um, especially on the lake side, um, that will show you what the monitoring process actually looks like in the field. So um, those are there for you, and we hope that you will take advantage of them as well. Now, I really like this feature that we have on our website, and I think it kind of hides on our website a little bit, but it's a really cool feature, and it's one um, that we highlighted, uh, Eric and I, in a session we gave at the Michigan Inland Lakes Convention in October. Um, and this is built for our lake volunteers that have maybe a whole lot of data um, from their lake and aren't quite sure how to share it um, on our lake website page, we have um, this section, you have to scroll all the way down <laughs> to the bottom of the page, but there's a section called create your own data presentation. And there are two links, um, one for a PowerPoint template, if you want to give a presentation about your lake data, and also the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program graph builder tool. And that will actually download a spreadsheet to your computer that you can use to pay, copy and paste in your specific data and it will automatically generate graphs of your data for you. So um, a lot of people have found this to be really helpful. And you know, rather than having to try and build something from scratch, it's an opportunity to um, you know, take advantage of a template we already put together for you. I shouldn't say we, I should say that Paul already put together for you. So um, check that out if, if that's something you're interested in, um, if you're doing lake monitoring and want to share your data. Another exciting announcement, announcement on the lake side, enrollment is now open for the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program. So if you are planning to or thinking about volunteering in the CLMP this year, well, next summer, um, you can enroll now. Enrollment will be open through the spring, so you have time to do that for most of the parameters. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to just get it done and have that have that checked off your to do list. So um, under lakes uh, on our page, if you click on lakes, there is a page that says become a volunteer. If you click on that, you'll see the instructions for enrollment. Um, click here to enroll will take you into our enrollment system. And down below, you'll find all the parameter and fee information to look at before you go and click that button. Because once you click that button, it's going to ask you to start making decisions. It's nice to be able to look at the prices and the different parameters beforehand. So on the same page, you'll see all of that information underneath parameter and fee information. Um, if you are a returning volunteer, you'll be asked to sign the 2023 participation waiver. If you're a new volunteer, you'll have to set up a profile and the website will walk you right through that. So um, that's, that's the process. We do all of our enrollment online. 
And there's also information on the website about the training programs that we have scheduled. So we're going to give you two different opportunities, at least, for training this year. Um, we're going to offer an in-person version at the Michigan Lakes and Streams Association Conference in Crystal Mountain. Um, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't get snowed out for that one on May 5th. Um, so we're planning on that for sure in person, May 5th at, the, at Crystal Mountain Resort in Thompsonville. Um, if that doesn't suit your schedule or your preference, we will also offer option on May 9th. So we'll use um, Zoom again, just like we are now for training uh, for volunteers there. So we're going to offer both options for you this year. We want to make this convenient for as many folks as possible. Um, a couple other things I'll mention about the CLMP. These aren't new. These are changes we made last year. But just as a reminder, um, you can sign up for the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch without signing up for Secchi Disc Monitoring. We got feedback from some of our volunteers that were primarily interested in invasive species monitoring, which is often something, especially on smaller lakes, you can do a survey of your lake in a day or two. Um, and that's different than doing Secchi monitoring, where we ask you to go out at least every other week all summer long. And for some groups and organizations and even individuals, getting out on the lake that frequently was tough. And so we wanted to remove that barrier, make it easier for people to participate in the CLMP and particularly in the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch. So we removed that requirement. Of course, we love for you to sign up for lots of parameters and do, you know, collect a lot of data on your lake. But if you just want to do the plant watch, you can do that without having to sign up for anything else. The other update we made last year is that for both the Exotic Aquatic Plant Watch and our Score the Shore program, which is set up for um, assessing the health of your shoreline, um, you can sign up anytime during the summer. Our water quality parameters and other things in the program, we uh, have deadlines for those in the spring. Um, but we realized, and again, feedback from you, the volunteers, where people were interested or maybe found out about the program a little later in the summer, and then were disappointed that they had to wait till all the way till the following year to sign up. So we've extended those deadlines to August 31st. So anytime during the summer, if you want to sign up for this or add it to your existing enrollment, you'll be able to do that. All right, a couple other updates or reminders about our stream programs. Um, as you may recall, or maybe you don't realize, we support both our volunteer stream monitoring program and a volunteer stream cleanup program for um, cleaning up trash uh, in, our, in our rivers and streams across Michigan. So um, again, as Paul mentioned, he's the manager uh, for our stream program. So he's the contact if you have any questions. But we have a really nice website that he wrote up uh, under our streams tab on the website for grants. Um, we run our stream programs um, partly through providing grant funding to support those programs. And we also have um, uh, training, of course, and other support for you as, as you take on those programs. So, um, you know, in, in a few months, we'll see the stream monitoring and cleanup grant call for proposals come out and you'll be able to find them on this page. But for now, you can go and look and see how things were set up last year to help you prepare. Um, we offer four different kinds of grants. The first one is the stream cleanup grant where we give funds um, to local units of government to do stream cleanup events. And those, uh, you know, other groups that aren't local units of government can obviously partner and, and be part of those programs, but the main applicant does need to be a um, local unit of government. It might interest you to know that the money to support that comes from the water quality license plates that you can get for your Michigan cars. So if you've ever seen those um, license plates on the back of cars, they have a little sailboat on them um, for, and say something like protecting Michigan's water quality. Um, if you buy one of those license plates, it helps um, support this program and many others that are protecting water quality in Michigan. And then the next three grants that we have are for our stream monitoring programs. We have an implementation grant, which is uh, to support full monitoring programs in streams. Um, these are uh, some of our largest grants that we give out to support a year or two of monitoring from um, groups across the state. We also have a startup grant. These are small grants that are awarded to groups that aren't quite ready to launch a full-scale monitoring program yet, but want to get started. Um, doing the planning, figuring out where they're going to go, get the training. Um, basically, our goal is with those small grants to get your organization set up to apply successfully for an implementation grant the next year. 
And then finally, we offer monitoring maintenance grants. Again, these are small grants to help existing MyCore stream monitoring programs keep going on their programs. They're a great way to update your equipment, get more if you need more nets and waders, if you need a little support for staff time, um, you want to cover some travel to come to meetings like this when we're in person, those maintenance grants are great for that. So keep an eye out. We will send out announcements when those grants are ready to go. And when I say stay in touch with us, we've got a lot of ways to stay in touch with us. So obviously our website, we keep that up to date. Um, you know, yesterday, I think I updated the website four times as we changed this conference from uh, in person to virtual to make sure we had all the updated information on there. Um, and there is a place on there where you can, um, under our About tab, where you can sign up for our email list. It has um, instructions there on how to do that. It's a very simple process. And once you're on our email list, you'll get these announcements about um, grant opportunities, enrollments, the trainings, the conferences, and things that MyCore does. So um, joining our email list is the best way to make sure you stay in touch with us. Um, you can email us directly. Um, all of our co individual contact information is available on our website. But if you're not sure who to reach out to, you can always just send an email to mycore at msu.edu. Um, send an email there. We will see it. We'll make sure the right person gets it. And then we are on social media. We're on Twitter at mycoremi. We're on Facebook at mycore. Um, again, we announce all of the, our programs, our grant opportunities, um, and also some really great stories about monitoring going on around the state. If your program has social media, your watershed council, your conservation district, your um, lake association, um, tag us. Um, we love to see those stories. We love to share the stories about our uh, monitoring volunteers, our organizations, our grant recipients. Um, that's one of the best ways to spread the word about what we're doing here and how valuable it is to Michigan and Michigan's waters. All right, speaking about that, um, I just have a, one more a slide here and then I'm gonna walk through some housekeeping things with you. So I just wanted to give an update and reminder about the program status. As I've mentioned before, um, currently the program is run um, through a contract to Michigan State University and our extension programs. And the funding comes from the state of Michigan. The funding for this program um, is state dollars that comes to us to keep this program up and running. And so that's why we work so closely with Eagle. They administer the program to a contract with us. And then we have a contract with Huron River Watershed Council and Michigan Lakes and Streams Association. And between the four organizations, we keep my core running. Um, it's a five-year contract with funding associated with it. Um, and we're right in the middle of it. Um, this contract will take us through um, the 2025 monitoring season. So I think that's really important for us to keep in mind. Um, and so, you know, think about this. One of the things that we learned in 2020, especially our CLMP volunteers might remember, we had a gap in the program because there wasn't any funding for it. And one of the lessons we learned um, that year was that we had not done a good enough job telling the story of my core, telling the story of the CLMP, telling the story of our volunteer monitoring and uh, stream and cleanup programs. And, you know, we would talk to state representatives and they'd say, I've never heard of this program. Why should the state be supporting it? And so it's our mission to do a better job of telling the story of all the great work you all are doing to make sure that um, decision makers and our partners know how important this work is, because it really is. Um, I can tell you from a scientific standpoint, um, I worked with a team at MSU that investigated um, how much monitoring data for um, American lakes and streams were coming from agencies, were coming from universities, were coming from volunteers. And by and large, the most data on our lakes and streams across the region, not just in Michigan, is coming from volunteer monitoring programs. Without our volunteer monitoring programs, we would not understand the health of our lakes and streams nearly as well as we do now. This is a critical program. So we're doing what we can to sh share our stories. We love to hear your stories. And we'd also suggest if this program is meaningful to you, you know, let, let your representatives know. Make sure that local decision makers know, that state decision makers know that you're involved with it or you care about it or you think it's important. Um, because I think we can all work together to help tell the stories of the great work that we're doing. All right. 
I wanted to spend just a minute here to walking through our agenda for today. And I know this is hard to read, but you should have a copy of this in your email. If you're here, you figured out where the Zoom links are. Um, but I just wanted to walk you through how today's going to work. Um, we have different Zoom links for the different sessions. So keep that in mind, wherever you, you want to go, whatever sessions you want to see, you want to go to that Zoom link because we'll have multiple things going on at once at different parts of the day. So right after this, um, Paul and Eric are going to talk about, um, do some recognition of some recent uh, volunteer accomplishments, grant recipients, and so forth. We're going to hear from one of our grant recipients about the work that they're doing. Um, we're going to have a break at 1030. And then at 1050, 10 minutes to 11, um, you'll have a choice of two different breakout sessions that you would like to attend. And notice that there's a different Zoom link for each one. So if you'd like to go and learn about freshwater mussels, um, that's where I will be um, hosting uh, Joe Rathbun, from, uh, who's retired from the uh, DEQ and is our, our resident mussel expert. Um, that will be at the Zoom link right above there. Or you can go to a panel um, where you're going to hear about local use of MyCorps volunteer monitoring data. So those will both be happening at the same time and you'll have to choose. But remember, we're recording everything. So if you wanted to see both, you'll be able to catch the recording later. At noon, we will break for lunch, and then at 1 p.m., we'll reconvene, and you'll have choices of two different workshops to go to. You can either go to oops, the stream macroinvertebrate session um, that Paul and Tamara will be leading at this Zoom link, or you can learn about lake data interpretation with Eric and I at this Zoom link. And one thing that I will notice as far as mention as far as our schedule, we're going to stick to the times on the schedule as best we can. We scheduled this uh, agenda thinking we were going to be in person. When you're online, sometimes things go a little bit faster. So you may have a little bit longer breaks than you were planning on. If the session's over, the session's over. We won't try and speed things up because we want to stay true to the times on the agenda. So by 2.40, we will take a break um, until 3 o'clock. And three o'clock, I'm, I'm really excited about our closing um, keynote. We have Jake Lemon here from uh, Trout Unlimited. He is their Eastern Angler Science Coordinator, which is their way of saying volunteer monitoring and volunteer science. So he's going to talk about their experience with Trout Unlimited. Um, Jake's based uh, here in Michigan now, but works throughout the Eastern U.S. and has it's going to bring a lot of wisdom and experience from his experiences working um, with volunteers and uh and uh, he's going to have some great strategies to share. So that'll be at three o'clock at this Zoom link right here. Um, we'll do a quick conference wrap up. And I mentioned evaluation here. I put the link in the chat for our evaluation form. We'll share that throughout the conference. We'll share it again at the end. We'll also send you an email later with that link because um, we're going to be really interested in your feedback on how today went. And um, we always use feedback to make the next events even better for you. So um, that's our plan for today. Um, I saw a little bit of activity in the chat, but I haven't been looking at it. Is there um, any questions? Oh, I see. It's just a goofy chat about Paul's hairdo. I see. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, um, I'll, we have a couple minutes. Was there any questions? Folks can write them in the chat or um, just unmute yourself and speak up. All right. It sounds like I was pretty clear here. So, um, Eric, I saw you unmute yourself. Oh, I was just going to comment on Jason. You know, it's it takes goofiness to make it through field work as well as uh, office work, right? <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. Ah, Joyce wrote in the chat, it would be nice to know what watersheds are represented today. Um, on the, you know, when you registered, you asked about, you were asked what, where, what, geez, speak it. I can do this. <laughs> what water body you were from. So we have that information, but hey, that's another thing we can use for the chat. So um, if folks want to um, jot in the chat what watershed you're from or water body, go ahead. And then, um, Paul, I see a question from Alex about grant RFPs. Can you address that one? Yep. Yep. Um, make sure I'm not muted. January. So late January, January 20-ish is when we'll release the 2023 request for proposals for streams, both cleanups and monitoring. 
So, and then it will be due a month after it's released. And I think, though I'm not 100% positive, we have the current one online. And all I really do year to year is change the date on it. So if you wanted to work ahead, you can get the old one. Great, Paul. Yeah, that is helpful to just be able to look at that and start preparing even before the new call for proposals comes out. All right. Well, I see all those watersheds coming in. I love seeing that. It's so cool um, to see where everybody's from. I know in the past, sometimes when we've done um, in brought in a big Michigan map and people put pins in so we can see where everybody's from. And that's always fun too. So um, thanks for sharing that. I loved seeing that. Um, and I think um, we've gotten through the questions. So uh, at this point, I may turn it over to Eric and Paul um, for the next, uh, the next session. Thank you, Joe. I'll get... Okay, Is, does that look good for everyone? Sure Perfect. does. Um, well, this is a chance uh, for us to appreciate all of you and all of the work that you do. You know, there's there's uh, many of you that are going to receive little, uh, you know, people who've been here for a long time or who have gotten grants that we'll recognize, um, you know, with a, a single mention. But it's also all of you. You know, it's amazing. Uh, you know, all of the work we're scattered all around the state and we can get a lot of and, and and we do such great work and so this is our chance to to appreciate you and to talk about all the wonderful things and how wonderful all of you are let me make sure i can so here's that one of the dot maps that <laughs> um so i quickly uh last night got a a uh, map for all the volunteers that volunteer locations for the CLMP. So this doesn't include the stream ones because I couldn't figure out how to get that information in there. Um, but uh, this gives a good distribution of the reach of our MyCore team. Um, we are all over the place. Our volunteers, uh, some of them have homes in other parts of the of the world and come here during the summer. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, and then they move into Michigan, you know, for the summer months. Uh, and, you know, it's not something that I was, I was thinking about. So the part of the my core mission is what you see on the right hand side here, and it's uh, foster water resource stewardship to facilitate the preservation and protection of Michigan's water resources. I thought this was a great thing to um, think about. It's not just the numbers. It's not the spread across the state. It's like, I'm thinking of all of these dots all are, are people um, who are doing just this, helping with the preservation and protection of Michigan's waters. Um, Joe mentioned she was on that uh, publication that looked at, you know, where is our data coming from? Um, and it's coming from all of you uh, uh, and, and all around. And, you know, without data, we can't make informed decisions. Without data, we can't get people in part of the process. Um, of management. Um, we don't know where the great rivers, streams, and ponds are uh, in order to preserve them. And we don't know enough about the uh, water bodies that are in maybe poorer condition to do restoration activities on. So um, when I look at this map and see the spread, I, you know, I want to say thank you all for being a part of making Michigan's waters uh, a, a better place uh, now and, and hopefully into the future because that's the benefit of long-term monitoring is we can look in the past a lot and then we're, but we're looking towards the future. Um, and I, that's, I love long-term uh, monitoring. And so uh, thank you all. And, you know, I mentioned this in my intro is that it's, it's so nice that, you know, what the highlights of my job is to uh, jump uh, on pontoon boats and, and row boats and, kayaks and canoes and and go on the waters uh, with all of you and it's amazing to see the dedication you know some of our some of our parameters in the CLMP but then also in streams it it takes some work um we this I was out on Fisher's Lake and I know some folks are here from Fisher's Lake today um where they were doing aquatic plant mapping one of our parameters for the for mapping where the native plants are and looking at the distribution this is a tremendous amount of work. 
Um, and, you know, here we had a boatload of folks who are all interested in wanting to learn about our native plants, our invasive plants. Um, it's, and it's such a great time because we're having a good time and we're there, you know, collecting really meaningful information. So uh, this is the part of the presentation where I uh, say thank you to each of our hundreds of volunteers that have been on the water uh, this, this past year, 2022. Paul, do you want to start? <laughs> so this is uh, uh, the this is what I could find. These are hundreds of our volunteers in streams and lakes. We are always missing. I'll, I'll say we are always missing some of you because it's hard to track. There's so many that jump on a boat and help for two months, one month, who jump in and help jump in a stream and help for an event. And so this is just a, a, a snapshot of, of all of you wonderful people um, out there uh, collecting data. So thank you very much. This is the this is for what I could find the 2022 um, volunteers with streams and lakes. And just to you know give some some metadata here, this is 5.8 font. Um, and uh, and I and I just got it in. I think a hundred a hundred names per per or a hundred rows is what you see here. So uh, Paul and I talked and we're like, you know, what's a great way? That's a powerful way to show, you know, to see all of you and to see um, how many years and how much you've dedicated to our MyCorp program is to. To, you know, it's when we're going to be in person is to stand up, you know, when I'd call, is this your first year? Is this your 25th year um, volunteering for my core? Well, and that's now changed. But I thought maybe we can do this with a Zoom appreciation. And so I'll give some directions. I'm going to we're going to try this out. Um, and by the way, we're going to do one for volunteers and for staff, because you know, there's a lot of folks who also work on lakes and streams that have been a part of the MyCorp program um, that still dedicate a tremendous amount of, of time. So here's the directions. If you are a MyCorp volunteer, so we're doing volunteers right now, streams and lakes, I would like you to turn on your video. Now, Joe, to make this most dramatic for all of us, Joe mentioned uh, in her introduction that there's a tiny uh, little thing that says view in your top right hand corner of your screen you can click view and make sure you're looking at you click gallery so that what was the game show is it uh it's uh hollywood squares That's hollywood right. squares and hey eric it'll be easier for everyone to see everyone if you stop sharing your powerpoint for a minute okay i i will once we're <laughs> once once i give the final direction then i'll Sounds turn good. thank you Sounds yes good. thank you <laughs> okay so uh so then the gallery and so we can see each other in hollywood square style um what I'll do is I'm going to call off uh, the different uh, times, you know, as if this, if 2022 was your first time volunteering, and then we'll go down to 21 year plus. Um, and um, what I'll do is once I call your, your time that you've dedicated uh, and been a part of my core, give a wave and then turn off your, turn off your video. And then we'll narrow it down to see who's been here the, the longest. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. If you're a, if you're a paid staff, turn off your video too. This is just for volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to even turn off my video, but I'll keep talking. Okay. So for, uh, please give a, a wave. Uh, if 2022 was your first year in the CLMP or any of our stream uh, volunteer programs. What I'll say hey. for all of you yet, yeah, welcome. You're all awesome. I, I hope uh, uh, you enjoyed your first year and we look forward to, oh, good, Matt, I like that, pointing to where you are located. That's great. Um, so thank you all for your first year. Um, we hope uh, that you found it really rewarding and that you, you'll stick with us. So thank you very much. You can now turn off your video.
Okay, if you have been volunteering with a MyCorp program for two to five years, please give a wave. Thank you all hey. very much. You're getting to that first, you know, big number of five years. Congrats. All right, now you can turn off your videos. Now we'll go to six to 10 years and give a wave if six to 10 years has been your time. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. 10 years. Amazing. And now you can turn off your videos. And now we'll go to 11 to 15. We're getting up there. Excellent. You know, what's great about this group of folks is that, you know, these are the, you know, I'm, uh, these are the people who have trained me in the CLMP to uh, seeing John Stivers there and Ray Schindler. That's great. The Schaefers. So thank you. Thank you. Now you can turn off your videos. And now we're going to go from the 16 to 20 years of a volunteer for 16 to 20 years. Can you guys give a wave? Ooh, we might have some bigger ones then here. All right. How about 21 plus years of volunteering? Can you give a wave? You know, Gene, I'm looking at your video right now, Gene. I think you've been volunteering for more than 21 years. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. This was a fun, uh, uh, a fun way to see, you know, how long uh, people have been volunteering and, and having new new people. Oh yeah, here I'll turn. You can turn your videos back on if you would like. Um, you know, it's. Uh, we love our water bodies. Collecting good data through time takes volunteers like all of you to jump in and be early adopters and 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 start. And then it's amazing when you know we see people like Jean who's been collecting data on her lake for 25 years. That's that's amazing. So I'm gonna share my screen again here. And now we have to do staff because like I mentioned, I'll, I, you know what I'll do? I'll just turn it over to Paul to give some some thanks to all of you too. Yeah, um, you know, my core is this really interesting combination of, of volunteers and, and staff, people who have made this their career. Um, even though all of us are extremely intelligent and could have gone on to make hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars in others' careers, we chose to work in the environment and not do that. And, um, you know, it, I appreciate you who are willing to, to follow your dreams, to make, your, to make those sacrifices, to work for the betterment of our society. Um, and my core wouldn't exist without this, without you. Uh, our, our staff, both the MyCor staff, but then our nonprofits, our uh, conservation districts, our watershed councils, all of those groups uh, that where we find employment um, are, are mandatory to make MyCor work. So uh, we want to recognize all of you who have made this your jobs. Um, so let's, let's do a similar process. If you are a uh, a volunteer, you can turn off your video. Uh, if you, if you're hybrid volunteer staff, leave your, leave your video on. And if you're staff, definitely put your video on, and we'll see uh, who's who's been doing this uh, and how long. So, uh, give a wave if, uh, well, give a wave if you're if you're paid uh, to lead one of these programs no matter how many years that you've been doing it. Hey, everybody. Hey, uh, Joe or Eric, could you get like a screenshot? I did I did get one of our volunteers as well. Um, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yep. Okay. Smile. Um, okay, if you've been, if you've been doing this uh, for five years or more, leave your video on and uh, otherwise turn your video off. 
our our five years or more people. Wow, that narrowed the scope. Okay, uh, who's been doing this? Uh, who's been doing this for ten years? All right, yeah, all right. Uh, who has been doing this for fifteen years or more? But that's me. I drop out right then. <laughs> Who's been doing this for um, for twenty years? Yeah. So thank you, everyone, who's been putting your heart and soul into you know it's our career, but it's also it's also our passion, and uh, my core wouldn't be possible without you. Um, and uh, one of the things that we like to do at our conference is recognize uh, those organizations and staff members who are dedicating themselves uh, to really just starting this process. Uh, this year, we have four organizations that have just recently received implementation grants. That's, that's the STREAM grant where groups get approximately uh, Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars over two years to start up a stream monitoring program. So these are groups that uh, go through the MyCor training. They write quality assurance plans uh, to make sure that they're following the the MyCor standard procedures that all the groups across the state use. Um, and these are uh, these are groups then that go out and find their own volunteers to power their work. So that's where we get this interesting combination of staff and volunteers working together. And I'm going to just do a quick share of my screen. Hopefully I have permission. And um, and if we were, can you can you guys see that the certificate? If we yeah. were in person, I would I would have handed these out uh, and I have them sitting on my uh, my my um, my shelf behind me and when I do see you guys in person I will give them to you. Uh, I have one for Berry and Conservation District, for the West Michigan Environmental Action Council, for the Lower Grand River of Organization, uh, organization of Watersheds and Olivet College. Mm -hmm. um, and what this says is that this organization became a member organization of the Michigan Clean Water Corps in the year. The data collected by this organization is being used to help track the quality and ecological integrity of Michigan's lakes and streams, and the work of its staff and volunteers is greatly appreciated. And then me and Tamara are going to sign it, and the hope is that you can hang it up on your office wall or the entryway to um, to, to where your organization is based out of, and just uh, just as a recognition of the work that you've done in writing that quap. Uh, I was going to mention this, I forgot, so I'll just back up. So far, so since 2005, we've had 44 watershed councils, conservation districts, uh, universities, um, other nonprofits, friends of groups, uh, become official MyCore organizations. So we had 40, we just added four more. Uh, to date, 26 of those organizations, which I think is a great percentage, 26 out of 44 are still active, still monitoring a couple uh, big stream monitoring events every year. So um, a lot, you know, and, and they're not funded anymore by MyCore. We give them that money and it launches them, but then it falls on those organizations to keep funding themselves through what nonprofits always have to do. So. I just want to um, say thank you to all the, all your groups who are doing that. Um, and now, actually, I'm going to ask all four of those people to speak. I just uh, I asked them, I, I prepped them ahead of time. I said, give me an elevator pitch. What's your group doing and uh, your plans for the future? So uh, I'll start with, with Erin uh, Pavlovsky so she can uh, unmute herself. And go ahead, Erin. Tell us what's going on. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erin Pavlovsky with Olivet College. 
And so we are very thankful for my course support to really start what we're calling our Eaton County Collaborative Stream Monitoring Program. So it's collaborative, it's held in partnership with the Eaton Conservation District. So I wanna give a shout out to Rachel Murray, Hillary Gibbs and Sue Spagnuolo who are also here on uh, the conference line. And so we're focusing our monitoring sites in Eaton County, uh, but also it's really throughout the Upper Thornapple River watershed. So we were also very lucky to get a startup grant. So we had a lot of planning time and we kind of did a pseudo collection in the spring, but our first official fall collection with the implementation grant. And it's gone really smoothly so far. Uh, we've engaged about 29 community scientists in our program, and we're really looking forward to our spring collection. So thank you again for the support and for allowing us to talk a little bit about the new program. Yeah, thanks, Erin, and welcome. It's been a great experience working with Erin. She is the best person in the world at doing quarterly reports and getting reimbursements. She's amazing at it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'll turn it over to Carlos. I see you and Kyle are both on uh, from the West Michigan Environmental Action Council. Welcome, you guys. Good morning, everybody. Wish we could have all been in person this year. Uh, it's too bad. We've got a ton of snow out here. Um, uh, currently water programs manager at the West Michigan Environmental Action Council. Uh, we received the implementation grant to revive our Adopt-A-Stream program uh, where we, we have uh, cleanups and monitoring activities happening with uh, volunteer groups throughout West Michigan, uh, currently in, in the city of Grand Rapids, Wyoming, and Granville. Uh, we are working with the Placer Creek Stewards, Buck Creek, uh, Friends of Buck Creek, and the Grand Rapids Water Protectors, as well as a, uh, as a couple of businesses that were uh, previously part of our Adopt-A-Stream program. Um, we've got a, a pretty good sized cohort of volunteers already and hoping to expand the program uh, throughout West Michigan. Uh, appreciate, appreciate the assistance on getting this uh, program revived. Yep, absolutely. All right. Thanks, Carlos. Kyle, anything you want to add? I see you. I'm just excited to start working with some of our volunteers next spring. We kind of ran short with the cold turn of the weather here this past fall, but I'm looking forward to the next couple of years. Awesome. Yeah, it was good getting to know both of you guys. Went and visited them on Plaster Creek. Had a good time um, just a few weeks ago. That's one thing that we that we do is the my core staff visits uh, visits partner organizations at their own location and gets to see the types of environments they're monitoring. Um, it's always just fun to see the different places around the state. Um, and Josh is here from El Gro. Hi, Josh. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Josh Arnold. I am an aquatic specialist from the Lower Grand River Organization Watershed. We're a watershed council that focuses on the Lower Grand in Ionia, uh, Kent, and Ottawa County. Uh, for this grant, we focus on the Rogue River, which is a, a major tributary that enters into the Lower Grand River. It's a popular recreational uh, river, one of the more southern trout streams that gets uh, runs of salmon and steelhead in the fall and spring. So it's a very popular river. Uh, we're reviving uh, an old TU monitoring. TU, TU used to monitor this river when they did a lot of work on the Rogue River from 2010 to just before COVID. So we revived it. We had a good turnout on uh, in our fall sampling, and we're looking forward to uh, the spring sampling. And we work with the uh, Rogue River Watershed Partners, a watershed group that focuses on the Rogue River. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um, thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Carlos and Kyle. Appreciate your guys' work. Um, and then, um, last but not least, I'm, I'm going to ask Nancy to unmute uh, herself. Nancy Carpenter uh, got a grant in 2021, so uh, almost two years ago, a year and a half ago. And uh, one thing that we ask these groups to do is give a formal presentation at the MyCore conference as a way of uh, kind of updating everyone, what, is a, what does one of these monitoring, monitoring programs look like when you're a year and a half in <laughs> from your fresh start? So I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy to give a more of a, a longer form um, uh, presentation. And uh, you can try sharing your screen, Nancy, with your PowerPoint, um, make sure that, that all's working okay. And I'll, I'll let you take it away when you 
feel like you got it going. Okay, Looks good to me. All, I, I see can you. Can you hear me? Yep, I hear you. Okay, great. Um, and I see your I see your screen. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, as Paul said, my name is uh, Nancy Carpenter, and I am the manager of the Berrien County Conservation District, and I am the project manager for the stream team of Berrien. Uh, so the agenda said um, for me to do an overview of program goals and measuring accomplishments. So in order to do that, I looked back at my QUAP, the Quality Assurance Plan that I wrote. And what did I put down for my program goals or program um, objectives? So I'm going to cover those. And, and then I'm going to follow this with some photos um, that we've taken over the past um, year. And uh, at the end, if anybody has any questions, I'll do my best to try to answer those. So, um, our implementation grant that we received was for uh, a small stream in the St. Joseph River watershed in Southwest Michigan. And my objective number one was to educate Berrien County residents on monitoring quality and protection of our water resources. So how am I accomplishing this? Um, we're holding the hands-on collection events. Um, I did do a booth display um, at our project at our um, local fair um, this past year. Just, um, you know, that's kind of a passive education. Um, people could, could see some pictures of what we're doing. Um, I put things on Facebook and our e-newsletter. Um, I'm planning on providing information to our county commissioners. Um, and then one-on-one -on -one education. Um, for residents. This project really easily leads to conversations on water quality issues. Um, people are intrigued by, well, well what, what's a macro invertebrate and what are you doing? Um, so that leads into a lot of talk about um, water quality just on a one-to-one -one basis. So that's a lot of fun to talk to people about that. And then of course, um, conservation districts, you know, this fit, fits right into our mission of protecting water resources. Um, so I can tie this into our, our overall mission and show people what we're doing. So my objective number two was to engage stakeholder groups and individuals in hands-on water monitoring and protection. Can everybody still hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> Um, so how, how am I accomplishing this? Well, we hold the hands-on collection events, obviously. Um, and then I reach out to a variety of groups and individuals um, using social media. But I go a little beyond that. Um, so there's still people that don't know what a conservation district is or what we do. So they, they may see um, our, our advertisement or our call out for volunteers, but they might just push it under the rug because they don't, they don't know who we are, or what we're doing. But if I encourage some of our partners to share on whatever platform they use, um, then they can get volunteers that might show some interest because they're familiar with our partners. So that's been um, really successful with this program and other programs we have at the Conservation District. Um, so our volunteers now include people from the Boy Scouts, MSU Extension. Um, we have some folks from a local nature center um, and then a professional company that is engages in uh, macro and algae studies it's right here locally. Um, I didn't even know that he existed until I started this program. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I get people from a land conservancy and then of course other individuals. Um, and then our stakeholders will see our efforts for water protection. Um, you know, this program added with our, our other programs at the conservation district. Objective three to monitor the stream health in the Hickory Creek watershed. 
So I, when I first, you know, wrote the grant um, and deciding, well, what stream, you know, should I focus on? Um, it was a pretty easy decision. I wanted to focus on the Hickory Creek. Um, Hickory Creek is kind of a neglected small stream in our county. Um, many years ago, um, there was a committee that was formed and myself representing the conservation district was on this committee. Uh, it involved the planning commission, it involved local residents that lived along the creek, um, it involved the drain commissioner. Um, we, we met for about a year, year and a half, like quarterly. And we had big plans, big ideas. We were going to write all these grants, do stream bank restoration, do other, other work in the stream. Well, it just kind of fizzled out. Nothing ever happened. Um, I, th I think um, everybody just kind of realized that they didn't have the capacity to, to hold a grant um, to do a big project. Um, and myself included, at, back at that time, it was, it was just myself at the conservation district. I had one other staff member but that was my MEEP technician and they really couldn't you know, do any focus on an outside project. So I didn't have the capacity and we stopped meeting and kind of got forgotten. So I have like a personal goal with this that perhaps um, if we get some more focus back on Hickory Creek, maybe we can revise our, our stakeholders to um, you know, form a committee again and we can move forward. Um, I think, I, I know our, our organization has a little more capacity now, and perhaps some other organizations do too. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, so to monitor the stream health, um, we are accomplishing this by obviously collecting the macros on six different sites. Um, we're gonna be performing habitat assessments at each site, and then we'll be comparing that data. Objective number four, uh, identify or verify verify problem areas where degradation has occurred and where remediation management practices can be implemented. So we are accomplishing this by uh, looking at what kind and the number of macros that are collected, um, looking at the collections at each site over time, uh, looking at the conditions at each site, and then asking ourselves, um, do these site conditions warrant um, agricultural best management practices? And actually at one site, um, I pretty much determined already that yes, um, some agricultural be best management practices are needed. Um, the stream site um, gets a lot of sediment after rain, um, you know, it really fills up with silt. So perhaps a riparian buffer, um, a no-till practice, um, things like that. Um, also looking at urban sprawl. Um, this creek flows from, you know, very rural countryside um, through um, residential neighborhoods and right into the city. So, um, you know, you're looking at things, um, perhaps talking to townships, you know, how, how are their planning, um, planning commissions looking at this and things like that. Um, and then obviously pollution um, and sediment is a pollutant. Um, so we already know at least one site, um, we have sediment as a pollution. And then objective five, um, provide monitoring data available for years to come. And we're gonna accomplish this by tracking long-term changes in the stream health and quality. Um, data will be entered and maintained in hard copy and electronic format. Um, program reports will be completed and distributed to our partners, sampling results made available to the public, and also uploaded into the Mike Ward database, which I'm really anxious to see that session this afternoon on that. Okay, so those were our objectives and some of the accomplishments, some we've already accomplished. Um, a lot of them are you know, still ongoing, obviously. Um, so I just have some photos, you know, that I took. Um, these are our supplies. So anybody that's, um, if you're new on this um, uh, Zoom today and you're thinking about um, applying for a grant, um, these are some of the things that you are probably going to have to purchase with those grant funds. So um, I have my waders there boxed up, ready to go out to the site. Um, some of my supplies, um, you know, measuring tape for, um, 
the lengths that were met, um, going to monitor um, a ruler for stream depth, and then um, things like a first aid kit and um, things for cleaning up the waders and boots and stuff to prevent the spread of invasive species. Um, these pictures were taken uh, at our side-by-side -side training. That would have been early fall of 21. Uh, we started out, um, out outside of the stream on the ground, um, going over safety, going over protocols, going over methods, uh, answering questions. And then we jumped in the stream. We did spend quite a long time in the stream that day. Um, you know, really going through the methodology and making sure that we're following um, the correct parameters and things like that. So this really started my, my core group of trained collectors and volunteers, and it was a great day. Um, we came back up on the banks and we did a run through of picking the macros. Uh, we did some identification, um, answered a lot of questions. Um, the lady in the black flowered shirt is Carolyn Grace. Uh, she's my mentor um, and she was the trainer for that day and she's really been very helpful. Um, this is our first um, actual collection, um, fall of 21. So that's um, me there. I am going through um, the box of stuff, explaining, you know, um, or mostly reminding, there was just a couple of new people that day, but um, going through safety, going through uh, reminding everybody to clean their gear if they're doing multiple sites. So there's no spread of invasive species, um, things like that. It was a drizzly day that day. Um, here's just some volunteers and a couple of the sites. Um, that's one of our data sheets. And um, so that getting back to that first collection day that it was drizzling, I made the decision that day um, to bring the samples back to our meeting place at the park. Um, so people weren't sitting streamside for an hour picking the buckets in a drizzle. So we came, we came back, we meet at this park. Um, it's got a nice covered pavilion. There is running water there for cleaning things. Um, and then when we were done, I did ask my, my core group of volunteers, my trained collectors, I'm like, so for our next event, if it's a nice dry day, do you guys wanna pick stream side or would you rather you know, bring all the buckets back and collect here? And it was absolutely unanimous. Everybody wanted to come back here. Um, they had a place to sit down. They could wash their hands. Um, there was surprisingly camaraderie. If we're all isolated at the separate stream sites, nobody can really talk to each other and compare what they found. But what was amazing is by uh, bringing all the buckets back to a centralized location, if somebody finds something interesting, they'll, you know, it was just constantly, oh, look at this. Well, people would jump up off of their station and they'd come look and our, our expert identifier, he'd come over and look at it and he'd explain what it is. And, and so that really was a lot of fun and it really kept everybody interested. Um, it was just really my job to make sure that samples did not get mixed up. So Everything's labeled, the bucket's labeled, like say it's number one, the bucket's labeled number one, the trays they're working with is labeled number one, and then obviously the, the collection jar uh, with alcohol in it matches that label. Um, and so far there haven't been any issues, um, so it's worked out well. Um, one other benefit is, um, at the park there, we can really take our time, clean the equipment really good, let it dry. Um, so I'm not taking wet items back to the office. We don't have a garage or um, a barn or anything like that. So if, if I can take stuff already dry, pack it up back to the office, that's really helpful. Um, these are just um, some more pickers. 
Um, so it's um, our collectors come back, they stay and pick two, the assistants stay and pick. Um, everybody just really gets into it. You can see there's a lot of intensity there. Um, I have identification sheets out so they can um, talk about the different bugs. Um, just some more photos here. Um, this is just some shots of some of the bugs in the trays. Um, so if I'm getting my identification correct, um, in the center there, we should have a giant water bug. And I think he's flipped upside down uh, right now. Um, on the left, uh, a damselfly larva. Um, there's other things in that shot too. They're just not in very good focus. I do believe that's the scud um, above him or her. Um, and then on the right, um, we have a water scorpion, which I thought was really interesting. Okay, to wrap this up, this is kind of a tongue in cheek lessons learned from this project. So I have discovered um, water is always deeper than it appears. Um, you can't just wear muck boots because it will go on the top of your boots. You gotta wear the waders. Um, everything does take much longer than anticipated from getting all your supplies together, getting everything out to the meeting place, getting set up, talking to your volunteers, doing the reminder about invasive species. It, it just all takes a lot longer than what you're going through in your head uh, working out. Um, you will get volunteers for this um, and you will have a lot more fun than you ever expected. So that's all I have, and um, I'm willing to answer some questions. Um, Paul, you might have to help me out. I don't know if I can see the chat. Yeah, let's take a look. No questions in the chat so far, but people are giving you lots of good comments. So definitely take a look and see those. Uh, but yeah, any questions uh, for Nancy? Um, I Oh, so Nancy, does each team go to one site? It depends on how many I have show up that day. Um, so my my teams are uh, at a minimum one collector and one assistant. Um, if I get enough um, enough to show up, they can go to you know just do one site and then come back to the park to meet. Um, if I don't have enough, you know, if they've got other obligations that day or whatever, then those team, that team of collector and assistant, um, they'll have to do two sites. Um, I've never had anybody have to do more than two. Um, so, it, yeah. So, uh, like, for example, this past fall um, in October, our most recent one, um, I did have a team, I believe it had to do two sites, and then everybody else just had to do one site. Okay. Okay, so we have a question here from Tamara. She asks, did you pick the whole bucket or did they mix stuff up and then pick until you got enough individuals or something else? Um, we, uh, we try to follow, um, I believe in my clap, I wrote um, one hour per bucket. So yeah. we, we try to follow that um, and just pick for one hour. Um, but I realized that that kind of gets, um, that's kind of weird too, to just do it by time because sometimes at one table we'll have, you know, like four people picking one bucket and at the next table there might be three pe people picking one bucket. Um, so it might get picked a little bit more <laughs> at the one with four. Um, we, we did have a situation this last fall um, um, it's not totally related to the question, but I'll share it. Um, my, I have a board member um, from the conservation district and she has experience um, both in collecting and picking and she's one of my trained collectors. And she did this like back in college and she's got a lot of experience. Well, she sat down at a table with a bucket and there was a, a new volunteer um, sat down with her and I didn't I, I kind of just cursory talked to him. I said, okay, so this is what we're looking for. But I didn't spend a lot of time because he was sitting with her and I figured 
you know, she would answer any questions. Well, he got up and he, he left and she said, well, he didn't find any big bugs. So he just, he just dumped his, he kept dumping his trays into the dump bucket. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, he got so excited by seeing the other pickers find these big bugs. And when all he had was little tiny things that would take like a dropper to pick them up, he wasn't wasting his time with those. So he was just dumping them. So we had to um, take that bucket and we kind of estimated the time that he would have, you know, spent. And we repicked that bucket that time. And, and we, we did get enough bugs out of that bucket, but um, so that, that's kind of a lesson learned to me that, that I can't count on an experienced, um, you know, volunteer to necessarily train a new volunteer. I'm, I'm the one that needs to do it with everybody. So that's, that is so true. Like you're the one that knows the process. And I've, I've run that across that a lot with university trained people. They, they learned it one way in class. It's not necessarily the way they, that we teach people how to do it. Um, so I see let's... there's a question about what is your best method or idea for recruiting volunteers? Um, probably getting back to, um, you know, I put it out on our Facebook and our, our e-newsletter, um, but I ask my partners to also share it. And to me, that is the best way for recruiting volunteers, because if you use social media, you know, whatever platform they're using or if they do an e-newsletter, if you get your partners or your stakeholders to share that information, you get a lot more interest. Thank you so much for presenting, Nancy. That was super interesting. And I think everyone was like, loved your pictures and was heartened by seeing the kids working with the adults. And that's one of the best parts of uh, my work too with when, when I do these events um, is that interplay between generations and it's, it's very valuable. But I'm going to let you go and well, free you from, you very from, much. from more questions. <laughs> thank you very much. Everyone can give you a virtual clap. <laughs> okay, thank you.